In 2022, the Earth officially reached 8 billion people. Would we be worse off with 15 billion people, or 100 billion people, all living a lower quality of life? Philosophers like Derek Parfit think the world wouldn't be worse off, even if it sounds unacceptable. Why? Parfit shows two graphs. Width shows population size, height indicates the quality of life. You could imagine A as having 10 billion people, and B as having 15 billion. The greater population means fewer natural resources to go around, less space for leisure or overcrowded schools, and thus a reduced quality of life. Parfit says world B can be seen as bad, in the sense that everyone is worse off. On the other side, you could say world B would be better. Whilst they are worse off in quality of life, this is outweighed by the fact there would be more people living, and their lives would still be worth living. So, which reality is worse? Parfit asks us to consider two principles. The average principle. If other things are equal, it is better if people's lives go on average, better. The hedonistic total principle. If other things are equal, it is better if there is a greater total sum of happiness. If population B is double population A, but is more than half as happy, then it is the better world. Parfit asks us to imagine taking this population further from world A through to world Z. A population much larger, say 100 billion or so, with lives barely worth living. In a sense, bedrooms are overcrowded, and diet consists of potato and muzak. Despite living lives barely worth living, they are still worth living. And according to the total principle, this would be the better possible world. Parfit calls this a repugnant conclusion, in the sense that it is intuitively horrible sounding. So, I guess if we just reject the total principle, then that is enough to fix the issue, right? Parfit says it's not enough, due to a mere addition paradox. Imagine a new world, world A+. Both A and A+, were identical until A+, discovered a new continent of people, with people whose lives had a lower quality of life, but whose lives were still worth living. Would it be better for world A+, if those people had never existed? We rejected B as being better than A, but is A plus made worse, just because there are extra people that have just been discovered? We can easily imagine two worlds. Both have a population of 10 billion happy people. But one of these worlds, A plus Hell, has 2 billion tortured souls, who, if they were allowed by their torturers, would end their lives. Their lives are not worth living. We would all say it would be better for this group if they did not exist. Going back, clearly A+, plus, whose lives are worth living, clearly that population, the larger one, is not worse than the smaller population of world A. Time passes and world A+, plus begins to change. According to the principle of equality, it is better if there is less inequality. A+, plus begins to look a lot more like divided B. If we were to say A+, plus was better than divided B, it would commit us to an elitist view. To avoid this, we accept divided B, merge the populations together, and what do you get? World B. Continue this process, and that makes World Z, a population with a hundred billion, the world with the greater good. No worse than World A. We cannot say World B or World Z are worse than A, because that would be the same as saying World A plus is worse than A. John Rawls says the best world is the one that is best to the worst off group. Imagine a scenario like Alpha compared to A+. Are the people's lives in Alpha worse than those in A+. Well, simply, they wouldn't have existed in the first place. Can it really be said that it would be better if they didn't exist, even though their lives are considered worth living? Carry on this process and you arrive at World Z, with hundreds of billions or more people whose lives are barely worth living, but still worth living. Nozick criticizes utilitarianism by invoking a utility monster that eats your happiness. If this monster ate all 8 billion humans, or their resources, he would be more than 8 billion times happier than if those 8 billion were individually happy. Parfit dismisses Nozick's objection as we cannot test a moral principle by applying it to a case which we cannot even imagine. Parfit isn't saying we should create such a large population, but he does see it as the logical, albeit repugnant, conclusion. Possible solutions include perfectionism, sufficientarianism, appealing to other values, or remaining neutral on the comparability of lives. We will cover these other population ethics theories later on on this channel, so be sure to subscribe to see them.